Nicotine acts upon a particular receptor that's in the white adipose tissue and can have a pretty profound effect on fat loss, really, and definitely a profound effect on hunger. Then you have something like a GLP-1 receptor agonist like Manjaro or Ozempic, which is working upon a different axis. It's not directly working upon fat loss, but it's working upon sort of these satiety signals in your gut. Now, they both have their benefits, they both have their drawbacks, uh, and they're both, in a lot of ways, like some may disagree, but they're kind of equally controversial, at least in terms of how it's discussed, right? Sometimes they both get painted in interesting negative lights, and sometimes they both get lifted up and maybe overhyped. So I wanna just discuss them straight up and help us understand like what works for what and if there's any true validity to them working for fat loss in a safe, effective way. Now, after this video, I put a link down below for an app called Supco. It's a really cool app. So they catalog so many supplements. So you can search for a supplement that you're thinking of buying and you can look at the reviews of it, you can look at their trust score where they third-party test a lot of things to see if brands are what they say they are. They help you organize your stack so you can kind of determine what supplements you're using and when you take them. It really organizes supplements, but it's a real good consumer tool. I did a video with them talking about how they tested creatine brands. They tested six creatine brands and they found that two of them didn't even have creatine in them at all. So it's a legit company doing cool things. So I'll go ahead and I'll link out to them down below. But right now uh, they just launched their pro version. So it uses Supco's tools to basically help build a custom nutrient plan from scratch. So this way you can optimize your stack for a lot better value and quality and you can manage your entire routine with their chat bots. So you can actually like engage with it and determine like what what is best for you in terms of supplements, what brands would work. It really is a cool app. It's worth checking out regardless. So check it out in the top line of the description underneath this video. So first I wanna start off with a study that was looking at how nicotine impacted body fat in a particular rodent model study. Okay, let's make no mistake. People that smoke tend to have lower levels of body fat. Like a lot of times they're thin, a lot of people smoke to control their appetite, but make it very, very known in this video that nicotine is not the same as cigarettes. Cigarettes contain nicotine, but nicotine is an alkaloid from nightshades. It's arguably pretty benign in terms of its actual like molecular form. It's just the fact that it's addictive. We'll talk a little bit more about it and it, it can cause some metabolic issues. What they found in this study was that when they gave subject rats 330 or 300 micrograms per kilogram of nicotine, they noticed that their hunger went down, but they also noticed that they didn't gain weight when they overate, and they lost on average 12% of their total body fat with no increase in energy expenditure. So they didn't have any increase in their energy expenditure, yet they lost body fat. And the most surprising thing with the nicotine is that they did not lose lean body mass. That's what's really interesting. Now let's talk about a GLP-1 receptor agonist, okay? The research on the GLP-1 receptor agonist is very strong. Essentially, it's helping out with satiety via these GLP-1 receptor um, agonism, right? So you're basically telling your body that you're hungry and you're slowing down digestive processing. But the early research with GLP-1 receptor agonists was actually much more in the world of mitochondrial health and helping the mitochondria utilize glucose better. That's why it was used in insulin resistance and diabetic applications. So we have that benefit going for us. So what's interesting is that both of them have these sort of unique benefits. The downside with the Ozempic route is that with a GLP-1 receptor agonist, your caloric intake decreases significantly. And when your caloric intake decreases significantly, your energy expenditure decreases significantly because it's just the way things work. So with someone that is maybe very used to exercise and someone that is metabolically healthy to a certain degree already, like you could probably keep your energy expenditure up. But most people that are taking a GLP-1 receptor agonist are not people that have been working out a lot. They're people that are just getting started and they just need that leg up. This is where it could be catastrophic because you don't have the foundation foundation of the weight training behind you to already like give you some muscle mass and the ability to have muscle memory and build muscle back fast. So that could be problematic. But let's talk mechanisms on the nicotine front for just a second. What they found is that nicotine binds to this receptor called an A7 or alpha-7 nicotine acetylcholine receptor. Okay, this A7 nicotine receptor is in the white adipose tissue. 
Now, the interesting thing with nicotine, what makes it not the best fat loss tool ordinarily, is that it has a half-life of about an hour, so it doesn't last really long in the body. That's why people that use it have to take a lot of it and frequently redose with it. So, from a fat loss perspective, you're like, this doesn't seem to work very well. But what researchers have now found is that this A7 or alpha-7 receptor, this nicotine receptor that's in the white adipose tissue, when it is hit by nicotine, it actually triggers lipolysis and it triggers fat to actually mobilize and burn at that receptor site, specifically localized in the fat tissue. However, it only needs a tiny, tiny amount of nicotine to do so. So when you take, let's say, for example, a two milligram dose of nicotine, and after an hour, you have, that's its half-life, you know, it's getting cut in half and cut in half and cut in half. It still has an active effect in your body, it's just low. And all you need is a minuscule amount of nicotine to target this receptor and trigger a lipolytic effect where you're burning fat. So essentially, these intracellular processes are occurring hours after you take the nicotine. So the benefit there is you could get by with a really low dose. Now, how did it preserve lean body mass? Well, it's probably preserving lean body mass in the sense that you're getting an activation of catecholamines, things like adrenaline that might be helping preserve a little bit of muscle. It also, it's giving you energy. Okay, so you're moving more. Even if you're not increasing your energy expenditure, you are probably moving more and expending more relative to the decrease of calories that you're taking in. One thing that we do know with nicotine is it's that definitely an appetite suppressant. It can affect uh, adiponectin, it can affect leptin, so it can make it so you're just willing to eat less and you're also having this cognitive function that's switched on, so maybe you're just not thinking about eating. So what happens with that is you know, you're distracted and you're not eating but you're not losing the energy that you would with say a GLP-1 receptor agonist, right? So now let's jump over kind of to the Ozempic side again and let's talk about that. With Ozempic, you are delaying nutrient digestion. So in essence, you could be absorbing more nutrients, believe it or not. This is kind of the side that people don't talk about. When you slow digestion, you might actually absorb more. So slowing down motility means you might extract more nutrition out of the food that you're taking in, which is pretty darn cool, okay? But with that, you are also bringing your caloric intake to a halt and you don't have the energy to want to train, okay? So we have to think about how this is affecting the body. Now, the benefit with a GLP-1 receptor agonist is that you are decreasing the food noise overall. So think of nicotine as something that's distracting you from food noise. It's giving you cognitive energy that's making you want to go a direction that's not even thinking about food, whereas Ozempic is actually turning off the food noise. You have hunger signals that are squelched and you have satiety signals that are circulating through your body. The concern I have with Ozempic is that when you have satiety signals that are going all the time, you're actually never able to really tap into the hunger signals as much, which is something that hasn't been looked at in the research and is definitely a concern. But it doesn't really answer the question of which one's safer, or which one's better. Let's talk about the drawbacks for a second. There was a study published in the journal Circulation that found that, and I quote, the major constituent in cigarette smoke that leads to metabolic issues is the nicotine. Now, what that means is that we've seen in studies that nicotine is linked to hyperinsulinemia. This is with pretty chronic and heavy use, okay? Now, nicotine is addictive make no mistake, but it's not addictive like a cigarette is, okay? It's addictive because you can develop a very strong physical dependency on it in a short amount of time because you feel good with it and you're streamlining all these different enzymatic processes within the body. Is it a true physical addiction in that you start having withdrawal symptoms if you don't have nicotine? That is actually up for debate because there's a lot that goes on in cigarettes that doesn't just happen in nicotine. So let me give you the safe measure there. Personally, I feel like nicotine in very low amounts, like one milligram and lower, is perfectly safe based upon the research that we have available today. Is it harder to break off a dependency from nicotine than it is from, say, Ozempic, though? The downside with coming off of nicotine is you might have a mild withdrawal. You might have a little bit of sluggishness, but it's going to go away very quickly in the grand scheme of things. The downside with coming off of something like a GLP-1 receptor agonist is you're putting yourself in a spot where your appetite's gonna come back to normal with a decreased metabolic rate. So the amount of fat and weight that you gain when coming off can be significantly more than you even had before, but now you have less muscle mass and metabolic health to help you with it. So my videos are always very unbiased, right? I usually say, okay, well, here's the pros and cons of each. 
I'm going to come right out and say that even though I run the risk of people saying that I'm doing something bad by saying nicotine is better, I feel like nicotine has less drawbacks. I feel like nicotine has its problems. And I don't recommend people just go out and take it without researching it. I'll take a low dose now and then. But the thing with nicotine is that it's at least increasing your activity and your desire to move. So if you lose weight with nicotine, you're at least losing weight because you're eating less and you're more active. Okay, probably a better long-term metabolic approach to do like a short intervention with this. But Ozempic, you're going to lose more weight and you're gonna lose it fast. But unless you are very disciplined about your resistance training, it's going to be hard. When you come off of something like Ozempic, you need to make sure that you're increasing your resistance training, probably even doing cardio to sort of offset the fact that you are now eating more and you need to utilize that fuel. You gotta put on the muscle. You also have to commit to yourself to work out while you're on it. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.